So I just want to remind you too that like no one, no one could have prepared you for what you're going through or what is to come ahead, but you are the rock star parents that you are. And there is hope after diagnosis. When you think about on the day to day, all the things that you didn't get done, look in the grand scheme of things and think about all the things that you did do. You know, your child is still here. Your child is still living, breathing because of you. Welcome to the Experience Miracles podcast, where we help parents find hope, answers, and drug-free help to overcome your child's chronic health challenges. I'm your host, Dr. Tony Ebel, and I'll be sharing my experiences as both a dad and a doctor on every episode. I can take the latest science and neurology of healing and break it down in the most simple and relatable way possible. We'll take on the toughest topics and answer your biggest questions through interviews with other amazing parents and leading experts, leaving you with practical action steps that you can take to help your child heal and thrive. It's time to expect and experience miracles. Let's get started. Hi, parents, professionals, everyone tuning in to the Experience Miracles podcast. We love having you here. We are so thankful for you jamming with us on this podcast and this mission we are on. Today is a special episode in honor of Rare Disease Day, which is coming up here on February 29th. So we will release this right that week. And it's a very special episode to specifically empower and support families who are battling and working their way through rare disease diseases of all kinds. According to the National Institutes of Health, there are approximately 7,000 rare diseases affecting between 25 to 30 million Americans. And here in a, you know, in our practice, I'm always talking about the big bigness we do, but all the lessons that I get to share with you are either from my own parent journey or my provider journey. And it um, it kind of happened. I, I don't know that there was a strategic plan for this. There was just a heart pull to this. And um, you'll see one of the heart and souls of our practice. Crystal is with us today. But we serve a large percentage of our patients have genetic challenges, have rare diseases, and have these different diagnoses and these different challenges that what medicine says, and, and, and we're going to talk about that. We understand why they, they, they put this perspective or this prognosis on these kiddos with genetic chromosomal deletion, this and, and, and these things. They do not provide much hope at all. They do not push forward much at all. They do not look to optimize things much at all. And so what we do is all of that as much as we possibly can. Um, We, I I can think of like the beginning process and we're going to hear with Crystal and Caden's story. The moment we meet a child, regardless of their diagnosis, the first set of information we do in our practice is we, this is the word in my brain right now, Crystal, so I'm going to say it. We dream up the biggest potential and possibility that we could ever think of. And then we get to work with the parents to go Mm -hmm. towards that. I'm doing my best to describe how different our approach is clinically, even for these families. And we will get all the way into that with this episode. But this one is going to, you're going to get an incredible amount of strength from this episode, mom and dads, you're going to get an incredible amount of love and resilience and real life experiences through that. So that's the big introduction. Now, the personal introduction is um, going to be harder for me because what God has done with our team is he has sent us the best. Um, He has sent us the most heart-centered moms and dads. He has sent us the toughest Son of a gun, moms and dads, and my former upbringing, like, I think of this, here's what I want to say about the introduction to Crystal, all right? When I call my dad, okay? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, we're going there. You didn't know, that wasn't on the sheet. When I call my dad, who is, I suppose a lot of, I don't suppose, um, me loving to take care of other people and just simply wanting to help, that's a farmer. You know, that's my dad. My dad loves kids, loves others, loves to work hard and help. That's that's kind of, a, that's the the makeup of my dad, Steve. And uh, my dad came and spent some time with us. He, oh, you know, they're visiting in and out, but he came and he was under care. They get adjusted, they get scanned. Crystal helps in that part of the office with this. And when I call, ladies and gentlemen, when I call my dad, <laughs> The first question he asks is, how's Crystal and how's Caden? The second question he asks, 
How's Allie, Dr. Allie, who's also going to be on the podcast, Dr. Allie Ajoda. So he's met these incredible, courageous, heart-centered folks, and my dad has gotten to know their story, as you're about to hear Crystal and Caden's story on the podcast. And so before he checks in on his, you know, own kid and grandkids, uh, he checks in because we're one big stinking family. So Crystal is someone who uh, courageous and determined and impact-making are words that fit and yet are not even close to uh, telling the story of what this woman gets done on a daily basis. So welcome, Miss Crystal. Nobody brings love, experience. And I'll say this, I, I haven't met too many moms who are working as hard as you are to move things forward for this community. So we're going to get into that. Sound like a plan? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. You got it. You got it. All right. So what we what we want to do for sure is, um, you know, I know once we get to the the middle of this and the next part of this, you're going to be excited to get about, get into the action steps and that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, none of us really enjoy going backwards per se to our sure. kiddo's story, but we know we got to go backwards to help these families go forward. So break down Caden's story, Sandhoff's disease. Um, let us have it. What are, What's sure. up with Mr. Caden? Yeah. So Caden was born um, right at, Let's let me backtrack already. Yeah. You know, my pregnancy, never did I imagine it to end, you know, at the beginning of a global yeah. pandemic. Um, so Caden was born in April of 2020. And really, the first year of his life, you know, with us at home was relatively normal. He did have some challenges with torticollis and plagiocephaly, which led to some delays and milestones. But really, his whole first year, year of life, I really thought. I just reverted yeah. it all back to that torticollis and plagiocephaly. Yeah. Um, what was birth like? Birth? Good question. <laughs> um, as you can imagine, if any mamas are out there listening who also gave birth during that time, he was a hospital birth. My decisions and at that time, literally, the hospital protocols were changing totally. day by day. If not, whatever was set at the beginning Truth. of the day cha changed by yeah. later that afternoon. So he was born 40 weeks, two days. He was um, term. And I remember at like our 40 week visit, my OB at the time, she was actually out for whatever reason. And so whoever was filling in, she was like, well, what do you think about an induction? And going back, my mindset, I it's hard for me not to live in those moments. But truthfully, my decision was based out of fear. Um, because surrounding hospitals mm. near us, they were they were actually not even allowing a support person there. Yeah. And Caden is my one and only. He's my first. So I could yeah. not imagine, like, God forbid something happened to me while delivering yeah. and to not have anyone yeah. there to help me make decisions. Um, so we the induction seemed faster, right? Yes. So before another thing could change and another restriction totally. could be put in place. Yeah. Yes. So that's what we opted yeah. for and we decided for. Um, he was a very fast delivery, mm -hmm. um, 22 minutes and yeah. he was out. Came fast, yeah. Yeah. Cord wrapped, induction. So Pitocin, all of that. Um, I just remember, yeah, once he was out, I remember it took him a good minute or two to, before he started crying. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really like the birth. Yeah, that was yeah. His, and that, that was his entry and that into first life. that first minute or two, you know, in in these sort of cases with interventions and cord wrapped mm -hmm. and these sort of things, once we start talking about these torticollis challenges, Definitely. these colicky challenges, these gross motor challenges, we have to hunt down all causes of it. And so, what medicine is going to and in, and and in Caden's case, we're going to get there. There is mm -hmm. absolutely genetic challenges underlying his challenges, but there was also. Another trigger of challenges right. that, if left unresolved, would have limited his quality of life significantly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I just wanted to to double tap on that. So that first minute or two, he he was kind of in shock, right? He right. was just not up and going. And mm -hmm. but then he got up and going. You know, yeah. nobody's nobody's tougher and cuter than Mr. Caden. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So he yes he did. And then um something I learned from you oh. actually, I remember, um it was probably within his first month, maybe three four weeks old. He, this, this little boy held his head up. Honestly, I have it on video. It's yeah. like almost four, four he minutes. Did. He was yeah. so strong and learning from you, right. you know, that's not all like in my first 
instincts as a first time mom, I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. look at how strong he is. But that's not always yeah. a good yeah. thing. You got there a little too quick. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. A little too much tension. Yep. <clears throat> um, exactly. So then um rolling into, you know, those first few months and then honestly all up until um almost his first year of life, that yeah. torticollis pedrocephaly really, really stuck, which caused a delay in milestones. Yeah. Um he did eventually hit certain ones once we started therapies but again the timing of but it that all. was a tricky thing so you knew like because because this conversation we're going to have about neurologically mm-hmm. focused chiropractic in Caden's life that comes later right so right. you're in the very classic um well obviously pregnancy was stressful sec because the last couple of months were were in the chaos and the overreaction mm-hmm. of the world um second was a, a traumatic birth a fast cord wrapped you know creating yeah. to and so you end up with torticollis and plagiocephaly and the answers they give you in the pediatrician are we need pt right we need assessments and that was a difficult journey yeah. it's actually by the way 2020 it was really hard to get that done it still is mm-hmm. because there's so many of these kiddos it's hard to get appointments but talk about that point from a mom perspective, knowing your kiddo had torticollis, but Joseph had mm-hmm. these challenges. You're very brilliant. You can see what's happening in a moment. And I know you're aware of, you know, the good and the potential bad that would come in the next moments. Yeah. And if you don't get it fixed in that moment. So what was the stress of trying to get answers for just that stuff, the mm-hmm. torticollis and plagiocephaly? What was that journey? Yeah, about? it was actually, um, you know, when when they're little, they go for checkups yeah. like every every few months. But it was at his two month appointment, and I was the one who um, mentioned to our pe- yeah. pediatrician at the time. I was like, you know what? I am really concerned about his head shape. He's favoring and looking to one side more than the other. Yeah. And they just recommended the classic, like, oh, do more <sighs> tummy time, hold him in a football pose, and literally tummy time is all that Ugh. we were doing. And I bet um, he loved it. He did. Yeah, you know, yeah. lots of baby yeah, wearing, yeah. all the things, and anything to do to get him yeah, off of his head. Tummy. By that four-month appointment, the doctor was yeah. still like, okay, more tummy time, and let's wait and yeah. see. Like, you know, the stronger yeah. he gets, the more he's going to be off of his head. Um Let's wait and let's revisit yeah. this at six months. And if we just pause right there, that's what's so wild about the pediatrician approach. They are like that part. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. going to get stronger and develop more, but with with dysfunction, with uh-huh. delays, with disruption. So it's not just cosmetic. And also, if we're just waiting for these things with torticollis and plagiocephaly, we're simply hoping it doesn't get worse. We're still not going and addressing what caused it in the first place. Mm-hmm. And that's what's wild. Like even just talking about this one thing with plagiocephaly, like pediatricians are, conventional pediatricians are so, they don't think about finding the cause. Right. And so if you don't think about it, you're not asking questions of the parent or going back in the case history and looking for clues, you're not going to go at the cause because mm-hmm. it's not even in your frame of reference, right? So, right. okay. So you, you you get the four month and you know, you probably yes. had to continue to advocate. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. So that's where honestly looking now, actually yeah. sitting here talking to you, that's really when my advocacy started. Yeah. Um, but lo and behold, had to. yeah, I never knew that it would evolve and grow into so much, something yeah. so much more. Um, six months rolled around and finally the doctor was like, nope, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's put in that referral to PT. But then so again, we got four months of you knowing, yeah, and them trying all the and things. them doing nothing. Okay, yes, right. yeah. Um, six months rolled around, and then but considering that time, you know, getting into PT mm-hmm. was um very slow moving. Yeah, it was finally eight months, eight and a half months when we enrolled in, and literally after two sessions, so we were going at once a week. He went from not being able to sit at all mm-hmm. to prop sitting by the after mm-hmm. that first session and then being able to sit completely on yeah. his own so in my mind i'm like okay cool this yeah. is this is working this is the missing puzzle piece that we needed um and we were seeing advancements Caden, unfortunately we never got to see him walk yeah. so we got as far as you know um getting on all four mm-hmm. or crawl he got he did get to you know a four-point position but um, eventually we hit a plateau in those therapies yeah. right before his first birthday. Yeah. And then right around that time, when did you first start hearing about neurologically focused chiropractic, PwC and, and those sort of things? Um, that's it's funny that you ask. So I, you know, social media is yeah. such a powerful yes, tool. And I had actually been following this other. So part of my prep work of becoming a mom i was following other like-minded moms on social media awesome. and there was one who she actually doesn't live around here she lives in michigan but um she took her kids to a neurologically yeah. focused chiropractor 
And I thought, how cool was that? And, you know, at the time, I thought that it was really cool. I never, again, I never knew that there was chiropractors focused mm-hmm. to um, the younger population. I, that, so that was something new that I learned. But um, at the time, my mindset was like, oh, I didn't, Caden didn't need that. Yeah. yeah you know, like, yeah. but truthfully, you had to, anybody could you, use it. Yeah. But in that moment, you're, it's real busy with a brand new baby, yeah, right? And yeah. so everything is focused on that brand new baby. And even though it took way longer than it should have, you got into some great, and what we love, you know, we're going to bring on multiple pediatric PTs and OTs and speech mm-hmm. therapists on here. We work in, t- in right. tandem with them all the time, right? And we love them. They're some of the most courageous, mm-hmm. brilliant, you know, they're, they're our people for sure. And so you were making progress, yes. right? And yes. so that's good. That's to be celebrated. And when you're making progress, sometimes that's the son of a gun of progress because it's like, okay, we're moving forward. And then the and, and the question that's virtually impossible for parents to ask of themselves and come to the answer is like, okay, we're moving forward, but are we getting all the way down right. to the root foundational challenge, right? And And sometimes it takes time to reveal what that is. Mm-hmm. And so definitely, like, once we hit that plateau, yeah. that's when I started thinking, are we really getting down to the root of totally. what's going on? I actually found you guys through a Google search. Yeah. So I Googled pediatric chiropractic office near me. And um, do you really type in near me? I did. That's of awesome. Course. I, I came on. That is like, yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> um, and we live about 40 minutes yep. from the office, but PwC was the first one to pop Perfect. it up. And the fact that they were peds focused, yeah. that was my, that was really what I was looking for. Totally. Um. And truthfully, so when we started, the our biggest goals were, you know, resolve yeah. torticollis, yeah. pedro cephalus. Because you knew it was still there. Advance. Yeah. You knew it was still there. Like, okay, it had gotten better. And it's going to be such a simple term, farmer term, but it hadn't gotten gone, True. right? And that's what we run into all the time with torticollis and plagiocephaly is that, you know, the different physical therapy approaches mm-hmm. and helmet approaches are so awesome. They're going to get into the soft tissues, some of the hard tissues, but they're not going to get into the neurological dysfunction right. that is really underneath of it. So we, I'm sure we went right into that conversation. Mm-hmm. Do you remember, though, for a moment, because I'm going to pull each of these little granular parts of your journey out here. Um, who'd you first talk to when you when you just reached out, oh, got yeah. on the phone? And because... Because that's a huge part of your journey now is advocating for kids by advocating mm-hmm. for moms and dads first. That's the sequence of yeah. advocacy is we need to empower parents. It's the whole por- part of this episode we're going to get to so that then empowered parents can advocate for their kiddos. Mm-hmm. So we have a whole team of yep. very empowered mamas and folks who work on the team. Who'd you talk to first? You remember? Yeah, no, yeah, I remember who did our um, yeah. day one and who yeah. took my new patient phone call. It was actually Laura, who's one of our yep. ScanTech CAs Perfect. as well. And on that phone call, I think she could hear um, some commonalities between totally. our story and her her son's story. So she did. Um, we don't do this with every every phone call that yeah. we get, but you know, sometimes you find the ones that you really do dive into Just your story. A connection. Yep, yep, and I. I was on break at my former job at the time making the phone call. And, you know, as a parent, when you're dealing with certain challenges, you'll do whatever totally. it takes to um, get your child the mm-hmm. help that they need. So I think our appointment was the following day or um, that first yeah. appointment or Maybe like quick. two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I yeah. will call off work. Laura, I will do Laura has two like, kiddos who, <laughs> you know, I was blessed to go into the NICU yeah. and take care of them just like Oliver. Mm-hmm. And it very much accelerated. We got to get her on here and interview mm-hmm. um, about those two amazing little dudes. But we got into action real early because Laura's a rock star mom, yeah. very well educated and advocated. So I'm sure she definitely heard your story with these, you know, birth related mm-hmm. issues. It was like, let's go. Let's get you in here. Yep. Yep. And so um, we were, we we chatted with her and Mm -hmm. I just remember, yeah, hanging up the phone and I was like, whew, like it started with that phone call of being heard and then going into the office for that day one Mm -hmm. being seen. Yeah. Yeah. So those two things, I was like, okay, this is so truthfully that we like, we were all in before we even. And you gotta, you gotta, you gotta be able to pause there too, mom and dad. Uh, This is not just a chiropractic conversation. Mm -hmm. When you are looking for a new doctor, a new provider, a new place to help support your child and move them forward. These first experiences are going to tell you pretty much everything you need to know. And you actually don't even need to put it on the doctor, put it on their staff. And here's how most of medicine works. And you know way too much about this too, but like they're just going to gather your name, your child's, your child's name, their birth date. Oh, do you have insurance? There's no advocacy. There's no connection. It is so I, I only know what we do, so I don't quite have the words to yeah. to say the other, but it's so um, sterile, 
and non-human in a lot of ways. And so you kind of know, just like you knew what you were getting into, you were getting into a, a, a team of doctors and providers who were going to listen to you, who are going to empower you, who are going to work with you to get Caden moving forward. You kind of know when you're going into ordinary, too, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And then you really got to advocate and you really got to work because sometimes we got to go into those medical worlds, too, yeah, to yeah. get what we need. Okay, so then uh, we'll go forward a little bit in Caden's journey. Um, so we get care started. We're starting to see some incredible results. Yep. I remember his first scans. I remember his first changes. Mm -hmm. I remember him responding to adjustments like the little boss that he was. And we had these weeks and months. We're starting to make progress again. But as Caden's journey and as Sandoff's would have it, there was another time, right, mm -hmm. where um, plateaus would occur and, and it was it gets tougher to make progress, right? Yeah, yeah. So where in this journey did you start to get down that road of determining Sandoff? So we um, initially, so we started with you guys yeah. in the month of May. Yeah. I want to say the beginning of May. And then by that, and the same month, but I remember it was Memorial Day yeah. weekend. Mm. We um, had our first round of like MRI, EEG, all the things done because I was concerned then of, um, and it started, this started around his first birthday, but I never mentioned it to you guys because it wasn't happening like daily. Right. It, was, it was very uh, spaced out. I was concerned of seizures, particularly absence yeah, seizures. Yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah. And um, again, he would just have those moments where his nervous system got overwhelmed and needed mm -hmm. to take that um, moment. Yeah. But again, the pediatrician was like, they they specifically said, oh, well, absence seizures don't typically happen until three or four. So it's it's probably that's probably not what it is. But we'll give you the referral to neurology. Okay. And so um, we did an initial round of testing. Everything came back normal. And then months down the road into you know, we saw, like you said, we saw yeah. all the positive changes totally. with with chiropractic care. But then um, physically, we did see a yeah. regression like that summer is truly when Caden, he was no longer he went from, again, yep. sitting freely yep. playing with both hands to eventually prop sitting. We were backtracking. Yeah. Then could no with longer his gross support. Motor especially. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. He couldn't support his head. There was a lot of alarming things. And I brought it up to the neural a time after time again, we just kept getting pushed out by the medical yeah. system. They um, when I told them all the regression that was happening, they're like, well, well, we'll revisit this conversation on further testing in six months when we see you in person. And neurologically, moms and dads. So Caden at this now at this junction mm -hmm. in the journey, he is 12 months, 18 months. He's yeah. in that time frame. The amount of neurological development, the amount of brain cells, nerve cells, tissue cells of the nervous system being developed per minute in yeah. that child's age is more than we do per day. So six months of this is what medicine still does not get with neurodevelopment. It's wild because if you literally like just Google neurodevelopment, you know this. And uh, which is why they're always like grumpy when you Google uh -huh. things because they're like, well, I haven't studied anything in 20 years. Um, so, OK, that was a bit too maybe too much. <laughs> but uh, the truth is neurodevelopment happens at such a rapid pace. Yeah. That watch and wait and revisit later is a very dangerous, you know, you, I, I was going to call it inadequate first approach, but it's actually a dangerous approach because mm -hmm. you're missing very key milestones. You're missing very key moves you could make for this child to just vastly improve their quality of life neurologically. Right. So, okay. So they, they, they try and punt again. You, by this point, are, um, I've never said this word in my life, you probably have become pretty unpuntable. <laughs> Def, yeah. Oh, you were, sure. you were fed up. You're at that stage as a mom where you're like, you probably went into that, if they say this one more time. Uh -huh. And so your advocacy probably grew another leaps and bounds, right? Yeah, in that season. yeah we grew another layer. Okay. Um, so I wasn't taking that as yeah. an answer. I nope. wasn't taking no, like we're not going to get this testing done as an answer. Yeah. I saw it. Another, or I sought another uh, doctor's opinion, and with you guys alongside me too. I'll never forget. I don't know if you mm. remember this. We were sitting in um one of the rooms over there, and I, I told you, I told you that this. So when we got our that second yeah. opinion, this this neurologist, he's like, he he actually heard us, and he's like, this is actually a far more um bigger problem something that like it's beyond my area yeah. of expertise i think you need to be seen by this doctor so he recommended us to go be seen by someone sure. else and um i remember telling you yeah. we were sitting and conver conversating about yeah. what had happened and i walked into the office full of tears because i knew it was serious yeah. but then i left with filled with so much hope because you told us you know 
we're going to pray dang hard that this isn't something genetic. But if it is, we're going to give Caden the best quality of life he could possibly have. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah, walking into the office full of tears and then leaving with nothing but a smile on my face like that just filled me. Because again, as parents, all we want for our children is to be, you know, comfortable in their own body and just truly be given every chance at life that they possibly have. Every chance, every chance, every element, every child individually. There is a couple of statements that this podcast, this episode right here with you, buddy, is designed Mm -hmm. to share with the world that children do have just this incredible potential. Specifically, they have an incredible potential neurologically and double specifically, they have an incredible potential when they have a neurologically focused chiropractor combined with an advocating forward moving set of parents and providers on their team. There's a lot of ingredients to that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of factors to that. But that map, that roadmap is significantly different than they have this, so this negative, worst potential outcome is guaranteed. We just don't mm-hmm. live there because no kid deserves, no child deserves to stay there. Now, we're also not being, this is the delicate dance yeah. as a provider, as a parent. We're not ignoring reality. Mm-hmm. We're not ignoring the results of the test. We're taking them into conversation and we are saying, okay, understood, realized, heard, Let's still move forward. That's not easy to do. So I'm actually going to pause here for a sec, bud. And I want to unpack your story in this um, along with Caden here. So as you went through this and you like this last exchange, especially you, you just you made sure that testing got done. Where did your strength and advocacy come from in that moment? If you, I, I know it's a goofy question. I know it's not going to. But where did that come from? Caden. It came yeah. from Caden. And as we would, as any parent would do, you know, they, especially one other big part of to Caden is he's nonverbal. Um, at this point when we were doing all of the testing and stuff, he was, he was probably 16 months at the time. Um, very, maybe three, four words is all he could say. And then, like I mentioned, a was a lot, of, was a lot, of, a lot laughing, of laughing, contagious, yeah, yeah, infectious yeah, yeah. laughter. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, <clears throat> And so, you know, we as parents just have to, we are their voice. Um, and think about it. If, if you were in their shoes, what, how would you want to, how would you want to advocate for yourself? And honestly, I would do anything, give the world to Caden before I would do it, <laughs> before I would give the world to myself. But um, yeah, it started with him. Okay. And now that I uh, see, I just asked you a question that I would not have liked to have been asked myself. I, know, I was like, because ah. <laughs> I uh, like when I asked it of you, I thought back to those NICU moments with mm-hmm. Oliver and for Christina and I, we were we were hard charging forward, moving sons of guns and yeah. just thinking. And, and then I immediately the image of him laying there popped into my head. And it's like because he he needed us to. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, mm-hmm. Oliver was our answer to that advocacy. And I think, so let's, we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving forward and, and flip into a little bit more fun with this too. Um, so I think when you do what we're talking about and moms and dads, we wanted to make this podcast episode to tap into your unbelievable force of advocacy for your child that, you know what, maybe this podcast episode found you and it's been waning, or maybe yeah. this episode found you and it never got activated because you didn't meet a PWC. You didn't meet that neurologist who did listen. You haven't met a crystal yet where well, mm-hmm. we came to find you and tap into that advocacy when you do. It will be the first page of your child's chart. <laughs> uh, All right. So let's have, we'll just, we'll keep it in some fun. Cause if we don't say in the fun, we'll probably get a little mad and you know, it's like sad and mad and fun and all the things put together on this one. So I don't know if it actually was like printed and in his binder, but Oliver back in the hospital, they had the binder, right? They had mm-hmm. everything digital and the HR or whatever, but they still kept, which I love because I love printing off scan. I have you print off scan so many times for us. They still had that old school binder. And I swear when a new doctor or a new person would come in and they would open the binder, I think it said like a like a big old warning emoji was on there. This mm-hmm. is pre-emojis, mm-hmm. but it must have said, beware, mom and dad ask questions and don't want drugs and, you know, whatever else it said to kind of yeah. like prepare the team. Like these are not rollover parents. And when you are in that medical system, it is pretty systemized to roll you over. To Mm -hmm. not have you part of this process. And we are here to tap into that because your child's healing potential depends a lot on their doctors 
but it depends more on you yeah. and your ability to ask questions in power and advocate. And that's so, I don't even know how to say this. It's just so not easy to do at all. Right. It is, it isn't. You're up against the machine. You know, oh, this doctor has these accolades and 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 that white coat on, and then you're in their world and you're in their system. And so I'm I'm going on too long than I need to here, Crystal. But um, once you found that advocating for Caden worked, and you had a team of advocates to start to surround you, right, with PwC, yeah. how did you find continue to find your strength and build upon that? And we're going to get to how you're now bringing that to others. Yeah. But staying in your journey for just a moment, when did you know how important that was? Yeah, no. Well, it's funny that you mentioned the binder, too, because I joke all the time. And but part of me is actually a little serious yeah. is that I feel like there definitely is notes about us. Like, you know, yeah. mom is X, Y, Z and her stance on these things are X, Y, Z. But I think, too, just, you know, time and time again, being punted and being thrown to the wolves, you just build this. We're, we're given as parents this innate gut feeling about certain things and you got to run with that what came next that continued to build your strength mm -hmm. in advocacy and gave you momentum because i remember taking care of you remember yeah. we were taking care of you and Caden and the family i remember when you found your spark so if we go back to that moment in time for you because you went from doing that but feeling uncomfortable doing that advocating for Caden, mm -hmm. and then you were an unleashed machine of advocacy. Yeah. So what was that transition to where you really felt empowered to do that? So for Caden too, I feel like a lot of the things that they were recommending, mm -hmm. you know, they they went to school for yeah. for the the stuff all of the things that they were recommending. I'm not the expert, but truly I am the expert. Yes, big you time. know, we are the expert on our children and now they'll tell me that. Now um things have kind of yeah. changed and feel like, you know, well you're with your son all the time, so like they Give us the scoop. Yes, totally, but it wasn't it wasn't always no. like that um we it was when things when we initially may have followed to a small degree some of the things that they recommended yeah. but when things didn't work out or if anything got worse yeah so let's um, go there with the seizures because that was yeah. our, that was yeah. and that is so one of the specialties i've always had um you know, because of, and there's going to be a huge uh, seizures deep dive episode mm -hmm. coming out here real soon because that was Oliver's life. That's yeah. what he had. That's what he was supposed to have forever. So I've made that my specialty within my specialty. So knowing that I know the causative factors, I know the triggers, yeah. I know the medications, the level of effectiveness mm -hmm. or side effectiveness and, and all the things. It's a very tough world, very yeah. um, convoluted world that um, it can be hard to see clearer pictures. So that's what we try and do. We really try and help families see a picture forward to to be a broken record there intentionally. Again, that's my job with you and Caden was to say, OK, we might be up against something. We are. We yeah. can see on the scans. We can see on the testing like these are seizure disorders. Seizures suck. Seizures are serious. But so are side effects. Mm -hmm. And if you want a child to continue to progress and have a high quality of life, what if you can do things that can mitigate and attenuate seizure activity, neurological dysfunction that's causing it and therefore seizure mm -hmm. activity while also having a host of positive side effects? Yeah. So that was the dance we were in with Caden. It right. was that you were getting more and more. They were saying more meds, more of this. Yeah, no. Some you did. Yeah, <laughs> some you did. And oh, let's go there for a sec. Okay. So some, because you're in there and you're trying to put the fire out and you did. How did he do with those? Yeah. So Caden's seizures at the beginning when he started right. um were very scary he don't. i don't i can't tell you how many times i thought he was lifeless you know on our living room floor yeah. more than i can count yeah. but um once, once too many once too many yeah. and the side of so you know we just wanted it we went from our goals initially went from wanting seizure freedom to honestly just being able to manage the seizures. So you just even wanted if they, not that. Yes, not, the, not, the, not that. That's just kind of the starting point. We saw that. We have this. Let's not have this. Yeah. So we, at that at those times, we were reaching out to the doctors like, hey, this isn't working. The side effects of these medications um, were, he was sleeping. Honestly, yeah. I remember messaging the doctor 18 to 20 hours a day. Yeah. Because, and then I, and I, I actually looked back at some of my messages to them, you know, three years ago now. And saying, like, I feel like, and I mentioned that, is this part of your, um, 
diagnosis process because still we were also waiting still not um, getting the genetic wise. yeah a genetic wise what our um because they were just thinking more so is epilepsy yeah. Yeah, the, a yep. form of epilepsy yep. and um the, my biggest concern was how yep. tired and lethargic and we weren't even able to do any of his therapies totally. or xyz and so I didn't like that, but then also his seizures were pretty severe. Yeah. So of course they were recommending so you had more two medications. Negatives. You were not you were not getting the first job done, yes. not that. And then you had this whole host of side effects that was going to completely cause his delays to be worse and his quality of life. Because mm -hmm. if you can't do therapies, you can't do things. He not can't just eating, do life. Yeah, totally. All of the so, things, yeah. and then bringing it back to your team, yeah. we're like, let's yeah. let's revamp and give him that. We up leveled him to an intensive. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So so this is one of the keys that's right here with seizures. So there's there's a couple of things about this. With seizures, um, the let's just go into the obvious, right? And the goal for every parent, the goal for every provider, like if we just let it be, would be we have them, let's not have them at all. Okay. That's a huge divide, mm -hmm. right? To get to and when you're dealing with genetic disorders and everything else, you know, different things in there. Well, what you got to do to know that you're making progress is you need to change the pattern. We call it pattern right. now. Mm -hmm. You need to be able mm -hmm. to change. When we have changeability to a nervous system, that's actually a good sign. But now let's let's split apart the word changeability. We want changeability in the positive direction. Yeah. And so in Caden's case, the more medications that were coming in at the first round of things, we had changeability in a double negative direction. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. not getting seizure abatement. And we were getting tons of, you know, quality of life mm -hmm. destruction from mm -hmm. them as well. So what turned the tide that you had to continue to fight the advocacy yeah. back yeah. to the one on one of this podcast. So what happened to be able to change that? So we um, that's when my voice really got yeah. loud and I just was I was up front and I said, you know, I don't feel comfortable with any additional medications, especially at the degree of how yeah. often he was sleeping. So um, I brought up you know that we were seeing a neurologically focused chiropractor and it took probably two years before they actually yeah. started recognizing and asking questions yeah. about um you know yeah the the chiropractic care that Caden yeah. has been receiving but it it just it just took that all of those hosts of things negative things yeah. to really give me that voice that I needed and then once we did start that two weeks, totally. twice a day, yeah. um, we saw great positive changes yeah. happening. And then we were actually able, currently Caden is on one um, seizure med, but it's below the like therapeutic yeah. dose. So yeah. he's on a very, very minuscule amount. Um, yeah. Which and, is unheard of in his work. Yes. Yeah. And his seizures, he... They honestly, you wouldn't no. if if he was sitting here and he were to have a seizure, they happen very, very seldom. Yeah. I can't tell you how. Like, right. I don't know. Very seldom. But they're like gone within yeah. three seconds. Yeah. His resiliency his neurological adaptability. So the way you win any neurological battle, but including this one, is you don't try. It's going to sound like I'm saying the exact wrong opposite thing, but they can't be shut down. They need to have neurological restoration, resiliency and adaptability built yeah. back up. So seizures are a deep multifaceted neurological dysfunction. It messes with everything from what's called vagus nerve function, afferentation, mm -hmm. proprioception, CSF fluid, metabolism. So once you alter neurological function to this degree, you alter all the things the nervous system controls, which is, yeah. you know, all the things. And so you got to get to that root dysfunction neurologically and you rebuild it and you restore it and you reorganize it. And in a case like Caden's, because he's dealing with what he's gone through with his birth and the triggers of neurological dysfunction from that, and he's going through what we would soon find with Sandhoff's, he's got a more significant headwind, meaning he's got more stress coming at him yeah. and he can't hold on to adjustments and hold on to therapies and hold on to development like we would ideally wish. And so here's how it all comes down. Parents, you need to hear this part. So it's honestly just a neurological mathematical equation that says, OK, if he's been through all that and he's up against all this genetically, he needs more of us. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's literally a math equation that says, OK, and this is why if you've taken your child with a genetic disorder, with epilepsy, with autism, with a rare disease, 
to a chiropractor and they haven't told you the truth of how often your kid needs mm-hmm. to get adjusted, just do what Crystal did. Get a job there and you know, earn your job there and serve and save. We're going to go there next with empowerment and advocacy on a large scale. You know, you did it for Caden, you got your reps mm-hmm. and now you're doing it for literally freaking tens of thousands of families and you're joining us here and hopefully we reach millions. And so now for Caden, we did get to see him move forward and we got to hold off a bunch of bad. Mm-hmm. And and that's my favorite thing about chiropractic. It does more than those two things. But for today's conversation, neurologically focused chiropractic helps a child move forward, build resiliency, reorganize the nervous system. And then one of the real cool things that chiropractic does for the rare disease and genetic community is it just holds off a whole bunch of medications and a whole bunch of stuff that they told you you would need forever in high doses. And Caden has mm-hmm. defied expectations significantly, especially in this space. You got me on one there because I really don't like seizure drugs. I I understand when they need to be there, but they're my, out of all of them, they're my least favorite Mm because Oliver had to be on them for a little bit. And um, so, yeah, that's where Caden was. All right. So for the sake of this, let's go to, so in time you do get, which is, gives you clarity, right? You get the diagnosis of Sandhoff's disease. And so now you're in that community. Mm And that community doesn't always have the same experience you have, right. right? With others outside of the traditional medical system getting on their team. Mm-hmm. And so why are you so, I know I'm jumping a couple of steps here to this next question, but why are you so committed to getting into the Sandoff community and these other communities yeah. and getting them connected to a Hope dealership and a place like PwC or into a PX Docs mm-hmm. office? Truthfully, it's for... It's for all the Cadens, you know, all the Leos, all the Mias, all the other Kados out there who are going through these day to day challenges and all for all of you as parents, too. You know, I, I, I said it earlier, you know, just going back to we would do anything to give our children the quality of life that they need. And for I do it for those families just to experience like what Caden has been exper- like the miracles that yeah. literally are within yes, the ma'am. walls. Yeah. Um. And what did those experiencing those miracles for Caden? Remember your answer mm-hmm. to the question perfectly before was, hey, why'd you do this for Caden? Now, why are you doing all of this for all of the Cadens? Yeah. So who's riding along with all of those Cadens? It's us. Yeah. It's moms and dads yeah. and those sort of things. So just pulling that, stri- pulling that string there for me a bit, bud. When you're in the office as Caden's mom, not the one where you're serving as part of our team just Mm -hmm. now, and you do have questions and you do have concerns and you have your questions answered and you have your concerns alleviated and you have a plan moving forward, what value, what does that give you, your health? What does that do for your nervous system? (laughs) It does many, many good things. No, because you know that this day-to-day life with, Mm. uh, with our kids, it's, it's, you know, likely nighttime sleep isn't good. Stress levels are ultimate high. Uh, your partnerships at home, you know, the family dynamic dynamic can be um, just there could yeah. be some uh, challenges there. And coming to find finally find an office or a team that brings like the answers, brings the hope and just walks alongside of you is such a relief you can finally take a deep breath versus just constantly in a in a go fight or flight state um that that in itself for you as a parent is is all it builds and it builds community and the other thing that we've been able to do with our practice and you are a lead advocate within that and this is happening in px docs offices Mm -hmm. all around is we are building a community within a community now for us especially we have a really phenomenal Oh, it gets me there. It's I don't have the I love words. I use words all the time and I cannot describe this special needs, rare disease, genetic disorder mm-hmm. community. Um, I, I remember, you know, our, our, who's helped our families big time. Nancy yeah. Monica, who's going to come in here next and do another episode with me about seizures and about her story. Um, you know, she was sitting in there a couple of months ago waiting for her adjustment. And she said, you know, I always knew, Tony. But I had no clue how much you have served this special needs community. And and she said these words to me and it was so sweet and it's so true. She said, and they all know each other. And she goes, she was, <laughs> she, she's an investigator, right? So she's like, 
did they all know each other before they came in here? And I said, well, probably a couple of them, but we really encourage them to loiter. Now, what I mean by that is like, like, like you know, we're not going to get you in and out. We've actually built the design of our practice to mm-hmm. have this community room where we want you to meet other families who are on this journey, who are advocating, who are empowered, who are experiencing miracles, because every one of us is in it. And then every one of us is at a different stage of it. Right. So what you've been able to do is go through so many stages. So I see you get most excited when someone new comes in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so you're part of our team with the scanning technology and the inside. So you get to access and connect to those miracles. So if we, if, if we now are moving forward to the audience and this episode is going to spark into their advocacy and their empowerment, it's going to get them to understand how much unbelievable progress their child could make with neurologically focused Mm -hmm. chiropractic in their life. When you go to that beginning part, what are some of the first things on a phone call, on a first visit, what are the first couple of things you say to moms and dads and these kids and these patients? What is, what does that interaction look like? No, definitely. So if it's like a first patient phone call, I like to always ask, like, tell me about like, tell me a little bit more about your child, because you know, that's, one thing as a parent in the traditional medical world is they don't really ask about it. And you're not asking about their diagnosis because that's on the paperwork. Right. You're actually asking, no, go ahead. Tell me about your kid. Tell me about your child. Mm -hmm. And then it stems from there, basically what, based off of what they say, you know, you can find again, like Laura did with myself, find certain commonalities and tie in your story to theirs and then just help them make them feel heard, listened to, seen, because, you know, I am you. Yeah. You know, we're all no matter what is going on in your life versus mine, we're all on this parenthood journey together. Um, and these parents are calling our offices because they're going through some type of challenge. Their yeah. their their child is struggling to some degree. Yeah. And whether it may be a rare genetic condition or not, you know, I still understand. Yeah. I still empathize. Every with bit you. of being a parent is really, yeah. really tough. It exactly. just gets tougher in certain, you know, certain criteria, right? Right. Yeah. No. Okay. All right. So there's one more layer that you are very actively involved in that I want you to tell and invite these parents into. So we mm-hmm. built PX Docs. Um, we call it our platform. That includes this podcast. That includes our YouTube channel. That includes our Instagram. If you don't follow us there, Crystal's very engaged. She may have me dance in a reel later on today to uh, have some fun there. We call it Edu. Entertainment? Is yes. that the term of uh-huh. it? Okay. All right. So um, you can follow us at PX Docs. You can follow us on Facebook as well. So we know that, and this is kind of the wild thing for us, and and I love it, and I'm still getting used to it. So you're hearing a real raw kind of like question pla- cl- slash last story on this. We know that we're not going to get to meet every single one of you in person, and I'm not going to get to adjust every single Caden of yours and 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 every one of you crystals and and Christians out there. And so, but what we very actively are doing is we're building a community around PX Docs. Mm-hmm. So what we want to invite you to do is to come into the the channels, come into the podcast, and. Feel a part of it, not just so you can hear our scientific explanations or listen to our stories, but so that you know we hear you and you know that we see you and you know that most importantly, what I want to say to you is we are here for you. When you comment, Mm -hmm. we read it. And we feel it when you DM, we read it and we feel it. And when you have a struggle through those DMs and through this podcast and through everything, we are going to find you the hope, answers and drug free help Mm -hmm. you need. We will get to work with you, even if it's digital versus in person. And then I want to run this out one more time and then and then have you share your role in it. And the other thing is we know how this is all designed. Share your wins with us, too, Mm -hmm. because we read those. We might read those twice, right? We read those three times and we share those like crazy. And so share your celebrations. You are through this podcast. You are a part of our community. We are not building your average podcast. We're not building your average website and, and, and Instagram page. We are going to build a freaking empowered, advocated, neurologically educated because, you know, we're going to talk about the nervous system up in here. The tribe and community to take over the world and move us all forward. Because what has happened with the perfect storm is we've all been pushed back on. Mm-hmm. We this Our kids are getting pushed into chronic illness. Us parents are getting pushed on, wait four months, dismissed, everything else. So what God made me in this PX Docs and this Experience Miracles platform to do is to push 
forward with you and for you. And to do that, that's not just me. That's you and me. And that's yeah. ch- and it's all the names on our org right. chart and, every, yeah. and everybody's about to come. So why do you love that so much? I know that was the longest question answer, but I know you love it as much, if not more as me, social media. Mm-hmm. And so why do you love it so much? And then what are you, what are we doing? Let them know what they can expect when they engage with us on social media. That's how you found us, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Another mom sharing her story, going to the chiropractor, became intrigued and away we go. And now you're here. So how did they get here? Yeah. No, so we, uh, that's honestly part of, uh, I love my job as a whole, but honestly connecting with families, whether it's through social media or in the office, we just want to have this available and accessible. And it is really accessible to, you know, mainly all throughout the country and if not other parts of the world, but we just want this to be able to be accessible for you and your families. Um, And like you mentioned, share celebrating the wins. We Every time you celebrate with us, we're celebrating right there with you, whether, you know, it might seem something super, super small to someone else in the outside world. But, hey, for us, that's huge wins. Um, And it's funny, too, because I oftentimes when I'm reading the DMs, you know, we want to be able to find local offices for you. And I can feel, you know, we in in those messages that were that, you know, PX Docs is receiving, I can feel the you know the heart-wrenching feelings that that mom is pouring into or dad is pouring into those messages and really we i just want i just want them to get go into that dang inbox and just serve them yep and we're gonna go into this storm together with you big time okay so some of those dms that come in there is a lot going on and so when we're talking about sand sand offs or trisomy 18 or, you know, just so many of these different genetic disorders Mm -hmm. that come with severe seizure disorders that come with gross motor delays and milestones. And those are the big things. And then underneath that, we know to keep digging and we find that the child can't sleep through the night. We We find that their immune system is a mess. We find that their sleep and their digestive system is an absolute mess. So we built this intensive program, right? And you're, vi- yeah, I can see mm-hmm. the smile on there. I know you're listening to the podcast, but a big smile came on her face because those are the toughest cases in yeah. all the world. We literally have patients coming from all over the world to our practice here outside of Chicago for these two to three week intensives. And so what are, I'm just going to ask you, and I didn't prepare you for this, but I know you have them. What are one or two or three of the stories that you have seen come through the intensive? You tend to connect very emotionally Mm -hmm. with each of them in a major way. But what are a couple of intensive stories that stick out to you that we could share with this audience to give them a little bit of scoop on that? Yeah. Um, And a lot of these, honestly, a lot of the intensive families that come into our office, because they're you know, they're going through a lot of these neural challenges. Instantly, I connect with the families. Totally. And a lot of times we stay connected after they leave. Yep. But um, one big win that I did not share with you, but I just recently shared with some of the other team members, because it, it just happened like uh, yesterday, is, can I drop Yeah, names? you got to. Yeah, they're coming on here. Yeah, totally, uh, yeah. Uh, So one of the most recent intenses we had is this little girl named Scarlett. Scarlett. Okay. Yes, right, how did right. you know? Yeah, 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 game on. What is, yeah. Um, so when they were here, um, when they came over outside of Chicago to see us, they had never, they had never been outside, like in public with their daughter. She was a little over a year and pretty much spent her whole first year of life in the hospitals. And so when they transitioned to home, that's really all that they were comfortable doing. But while they were here, I got them yeah. to go out to dinner. Yes, you did. And I received a text message from mom, like once they returned back home to California. And she was like, I just want to say thank you yeah. for, you know, showing us what's possible. what's possible. And now even better, bigger win, they traveled internationally. Get out of here. Yes. Because even just getting yep. here to Crystal Lake yep. was such a big. Big chore. Yeah. A, yeah. But they traveled internationally. Scar- Scarlett got to meet some of her um, family members for the first time. And imagine imagine having a newborn or having a child and yeah. knowing potentially they may never be able to meet certain family members. That is huge. That is huge. That, that is, is that is immeasurable. It really is. And that's what we're looking at with these cases and these, you know, whether it's a genetic and rare disease mm-hmm. or whether it's an intensive, it's kind of all the same conversation for this episode. We're not saying... 
they're going to get adjusted for two weeks and they're going to run home talking in full sentences with yeah. no seizures. That's right. not what we're saying. It's, 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 we're saying they're going to do things that everybody told you they couldn't do. They're going to do things that's going to make your day to day life so much significantly better. It's mm-hmm. going to open doors to meeting families, to traveling internationally, to going to the park, to all of these things. Mm-hmm. That is going to make the child's life significantly better. And as we've talked about through this whole one, and it's going to make your life as their incredible parent significantly better too. And so we built all of this for that. When we think of the child struggling, we think of the family struggling. Yeah. When we think of them struggling, struggling, like I told you at the start of this one, we immediately, very strategically, intentionally, and clinically, we swing the pendulum to the other side. And we say, okay, if that's where they are, Where could they be that no one else has told them they can get to yet? And then we go to work and we build a care plan Mm -hmm. bit by bit by bit all the way through it to see that child get there. And often this is what Christina and I and Crystal, we talk about this all the time. We expect this. Yep, there it is. I am wearing I have about 15 versions of the same shirt that say expect miracles. We do expect them because we've studied them. We know the science of, of how to generate and create and be the catalyst to them. And in the same breath, closing this sucker down, every day with my job, Scarlett would definitely be that. Kaden would definitely be that. Um, I live in disbelief. You know, I, I, I have a parent again and again and again every day say, our child just did this. We just did this. And um, I smile and nod and I probably go right into some neurology <laughs> to just feel like, okay, just so that I don't get emotional, let me just say nervous system things uh-huh. and um, let me explain that to you. And then I get done. This is literally a little peek into my life and I'll, cause I'm just a all in, you know, head down, do the work sort of guy. And then I'll get done with that shift or I'll go back to the office and I'll share it with somebody else. And in those little quieter moments or in the truck on the way home, it'll hit me and I'll be like, like last night, Joelle, you know, yeah. they sent a, a video of, um, you know, she wasn't supposed to walk and she wasn't supposed to talk. And, you know, well, medically, her parents knew dang sure right. she was gonna. And then they got us on the team to make dang sure she was gonna. So when I say they, I don't mean parents. Um, but they sent a video of her saying my name last night. First I teared time. up. Yeah, yeah. And um, so these are, we wanted to sneak in some stories, not just Caden and Crystal's or mine. And we'll do that every time. We'll always share our stories on this mm-hmm. podcast, but we wanted to share them to be able to tap into yours and let you know that you, especially when you find your advocacy and your empowerment, moms and dads, that's what your child needs to heal. You are the hero. You are the person who will push and pull and prod until you get the answers and until you get the action steps mm-hmm. and until you get the team that your child needs to heal. So, um, Miss Crystal, I could jam with you forever. I already know exactly which episode is going to be my dad's favorite. Aww, <laughs> Good hi, old Steve. Steve, right? Totally. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, don't worry, Ron. I got a shout out on the first one. There so we now we've got to my dad here pretty early in the podcast. But what I want you to do is to go ahead and lean into the microphone and lean into, um, for those watching on YouTube or, or Instagram, um, on, into the camera and just um, move this, move these parents forward in the way that I know you can. Yeah. So I just want to remind you too that like no one no one could have prepared you for what you're going through or what is to come ahead but you are the rock star parents that you are and there is hope after diagnosis. Um truthfully think about when you think about on the day to day all the things that you didn't get done. Look in the grand scheme of things and think about all the things that you did do. You know Your child is still here. Your child is still living, breathing because of you. And so I just want to set that reminder is that there's hope after diagnosis. There's things that, you know, you can never fathom imaginable that are possible for your child and your family. And I just want you to remember that um, zebras exist. If you're watching this, you see my you see my shirt and, you know, rare, rare is real. And in the world of rare disease people are going to, doctors are going to view your child most likely for their, for their diagnosis, but you as the parent are their advocate and you will lead them to all that they can imagine and more and give them the life that, yeah, they truly are deserving of. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. You're wearing your zebra shirt today. I did a video with Christina this morning and she's wearing her elephant chain because um, I guess we're sticking to the safari to close this one (laughs) down. But, um, 
they sure do exist. And in the world, you know, all you got, all you gals on the team have those elephant chains because when, yeah. when an elephant is in need, they all, the tribe literally circles around and protects, yep. right? And says, okay, we got you um, while healing and these things happen. And that's how we live. So I'll close it down with this. Moms and dads, this was another unbelievable, Crystal is a world changer. And so this is an episode that really is very specific to a, 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 a and there's, as we shared in the stats in the beginning, to a much larger number of families than maybe you knew were out there. If your child doesn't have one of these rare genetic diseases, the chances are you know someone who does. Mm -hmm. And so this episode, we want you to share it far and wide, but the ask would be to share it specifically to those families who you know are in the storm and, and, and use this episode and use this tribe and this PX Docs platform to help get them through that storm. So um, like the heck out of this thing, share, subscribe. The way podcasts grow is the more downloads, make sure you're downloading, not just listening. Share, subscribe, leave a review, blast it on those Facebook groups, put it on your Instagram stories, text it out to the group chats. Mm -hmm. Those are families who need to hear this message of hope, answers, and drug-free help. And we are so honored that you gave us your time and crystal you are one of the most impressive courageous favorite humans in my Thank life you. and we're going to keep moving forward together all right okay everybody we love you we'll see you on the next one